everybody, welcome to the Impressive Channel. There's this rap artist from Atlanta named Little Nas X who has been drumming up a lot of publicity for himself with his song, Old Town Road. Now, Little Nas X actually combined country music and hip hop trap music to create this song, and he ended up birthing a new sound called Country Trap and a lot of people actually loved it in fact it blew up on this app called TikTok, and people were just putting on their cowboy hats and dancing and soon after that the song became viral and it became a whole wave now little nas x never expected his song old town road to blow up the way it did he really only created it for fun and he wasn't even signed at the time that he created it so it was just a song that he did put out for fun but the song got so much attention that it charted on the Billboard Hot 100 charts, the Hot R&B and Hip Hop Songs charts, and the Hot Country Songs charts. Now the song itself was actually number one on the country charts, however, Billboard pulled the song off of the country charts and deemed it not country enough. Old Town Road, a genre-bending track from Lil Nas X, kicked up some outrage along with its boot heels after getting taken off the Billboard Country chart. With a boost from a mega influencer named Justin Bieber, the song tore through the social media outlet TikTok, and the 19-year-old Atlanta native had a full-fledged viral hit. The track found a quick foothold on three different Billboard charts, the Hot 100, Hip Hop and R&B, and Hot Country Songs, where it hit number 18. Not for long, though, with Billboard 86ing it off the country chart, declaring, while Old Town Road incorporates references to country and cowboy imagery, it does not embrace enough elements of today's country music to chart in its current version. That decision earned one big, hmm. Social media saw some sharp comments on Old Town Road's behalf. Country artist Megan Lindsay. It's got plenty of country elements, and it's as country as anything on country radio. Billboard responding to the backlash by saying their decision to take the song off the country chart had absolutely nothing to do with the race of the artist. Uh, John Rich, I gotta ask you, weigh in on the Little Nas X, it, should that be taken out of country? Doesn't sound country. Let the fans decide. I, I think that... Uh, That's not country. I don't, I don't like people that, that try to piggyback on real country music. So I think if you really want to be a country artist and be one, come to Nashville, write your music, really, really come up with something that's that's somewhere fitting somewhere around the country music. So as you can see, this song really caught a lot of attention because of the controversy around it. Now there are a lot of country music listeners and country music artists who feel like Old Town Road is not a real country song. And some people like John Rich feel like Lil Nas X is appropriating the country music culture. This is why Billboard was pressured to take the song off of the country charts. And I find this kind of interesting because Billboard has never done this to artists like Adele, Sam Smith, Post Malone, Justin Bieber, Ariana Grande, Justin Timberlake, Bruno Mars, etc. When they've made an R&B or hip hop song, they have never been pulled off of the hip hop and R&B charts, never. So it's definitely weird that Lil Nas X was pulled off the country charts. Now there is a person named Shane Morris who used to work at a country music label and he actually said this, Lil Nas X was kicked off the Billboard country charts because the mainstream terrestrial country music market is filled with a surfeit of racism and bigotry. Allow me to explain. If you know me, you know I once worked for a large country music label in Nashville, the largest actually. I won't name them here because I don't like when lawyers call me. Was the label populated mostly with racists? No. But were there a lot of racists? Yes. Using Billboard's justifications for saying Old Town Road doesn't contain enough country elements, I could just as easily say Girl by Marin Morris doesn't belong on the Billboard country charts. I love Girl by Marin Morris, but it is, objectively speaking, a pop song. A country singer named Billy Ray Cyrus, who happens to be Miley Cyrus's father, decided to help Little Nas X by hopping on the remix to his song, Old Town Road. He said this on Twitter. It was so obvious to me after hearing the song just one time. I was thinking, what's not country about it? What's the rudimentary element of a country and western song? Then I thought, it's honest, humble, and has an infectious hook and a banjo. What more do you need? 
A few days passed and I went to the studio to do vocals. When I finished the pass, I whistled at the end of the song. That's when the engineer stood up and said, that stuff is fire. We're keeping that. Glad you guys are digging the tune. Love seeing your memes. You know what? I do appreciate the fact that Billy Ray Cyrus hopped on this remix because I think he knew that if he actually got on this song, it would surface back on the country charts. And not only that, it's actually set to make another peak on the Billboard Hot 100 charts. So this is a big deal for both Lil Nas X and Billy Ray Cyrus. And even though a lot of people love the song, there are still some who don't care for the fact that this song and this rap artist, Little Nas X, is going to be represented in country music, which is why it was taken off the Billboard charts in the first place. And I do have some thoughts about this. Now, country music has always been somewhat of a racially exclusive genre. Let's be honest, there's not a lot of people of color in country music. Honestly, you could just name a handful of them like Charlie Pride, Darius Rucker from Hootie and the Blowfish, and this new artist Kane Brown. Also, the rapper Nelly has collaborated with a few country artists. In fact, his song Over and Over with Tim McGraw was a big song for him, but it was never on the country charts. So even Nelly wasn't recognized by the country billboard charts. The only time he was recognized is when he was featured on a country song. But when he made his own country song, he wasn't recognized. And this is the same thing that Little Nas X is dealing with now. There are not a lot of people of color that are being properly represented in country music. So when Little Nas X blew up, I do feel like a lot of people had issues with it. In my opinion, if a white artist made this song, it wouldn't have had this type of controversy. Because if you listen to the current country music now, a lot of these country artists are starting to adopt some hip hop elements in their music. In fact, there's this video by Grady Smith that went viral and it's called This Beat Is Killing Country Music. And in the video, you kind of hear all of these country artists using the basic snap beat songs that you would hear in hip hop, R&B, and pop music. So Lil Nas X isn't doing anything so drastic than what's being played on current country radio. The thing that made his song stand out is he added more hip hop elements in his song and he added a trap beat, which does appeal to a more diverse crowd. And I do think a lot of the gatekeepers of country music are very fearful of the fact that their music that they've been so protective over will start to include more people of color, which is why they only allow certain people in. They will allow pop artists like Demi Lovato, Justin Timberlake, Kelly Clarkson, and others to make country music. But when an artist like Beyonce decides to make country music, it's an issue. I remember a few years ago, back in 2016, Beyonce had a song on her Lemonade album called Daddy's Lessons. This was a country song, and Beyonce did submit this song to the Grammy committee because she wanted to be nominated in the country category. However, her song was rejected and it was never acknowledged by the Grammys. Not only that, Beyonce performed at the Country Music Awards with the Dixie Chicks, and when she performed at the CMAs, there was so much racial backlash that the Country Music Channel had to wipe Beyonce's performance away from their social media accounts. So that's a clear sign that country music fans and a lot of people in the country music industry only want certain artists to infiltrate their spaces. There have been some people of color who have made it in country music, but for the most part, it's very rare that you see any black artists really get represented in country music. There's an R&B singer named Kay Michelle who actually grew up on country music, but she was always convinced that she couldn't make country music because she was a black woman. It wouldn't be profitable for her to sing country music, which is why she was boxed in the R&B category. You could definitely sing a country song mm -hmm. if you wanted to. You ever thought about doing that? I'm not doing anything but that after this because that's what I grew up on. Like, I got a scholarship for Yodeling. Right. The first tape I ever got was the Judds. And um, um, they just send black women to Urban AC okay. um, with a smaller, you know, demographic of listeners. I, I just, I'm just kind of like, I got to sing what I want to sing. And you want to do country? Yeah. There 
There's other country singers like Jimmy Allen and another country singer named Mickey Guyton who is a great country singer. However, she doesn't really get a lot of recognition. As you can see, there have been people of color trying to do country music. However, it's really hard for black artists to really be successful in country music. And I find this interesting because country music was originally a black art form. And this is the history that they won't acknowledge. But country music has African roots. With the arrival of slaves to America in the 17th century came the blending of many cultures. There's a very thin line between the music of the slave and the music of the slave master. I've actually gone back and listened to old African chants that are actually note for note songs in America 200 years ago. Many historians believe the modern day banjo is most closely linked to the African lute instrument called the Akonting. It wasn't until the Gibson Company comes along and does the five string and the fifth string and the three finger Scruggs roll that we get it like it is today. But it was, a, it was an instrument that uh, came out of Africa. After slavery, America entered into its reconstruction period. As former slaves spread across the country, so did their music. By the time slaves were freed and then even later in the 1920s began to, ex-slaves began to move north in mass numbers. The division of hillbilly versus race was predicated simply and almost exclusively on a kind of racial hierarchy that this belongs over here to the black folk, this belongs to the white folk. String bands basically are the link between the really rural music that people were playing in their earliest days in this country and the later music that became known as country. So you heard that African slaves were actually the creators of the banjo, which is a staple stringed instrument in country music. There were a lot of slave musicians who played for their masters and created various sounds, which would later on birth genres like the blues, jazz, folk, gospel, and country music. Now the blues and country music have close ties, considering that both of these genres use similar sounds. And the blues in particular became a very important genre in American music because it opened up the door for country music, folk music, rock and roll music, and R&B music. Without the blues, none of those genres could exist. And the blues, of course, was created by African Americans, which did inspire white Americans to use their sound. You get white blues, which is country music. African Americans not only created the musical sounds, but they also created the melodies. A lot of times when black slaves, black sharecroppers, and black prisoners were working in the field, they were singing. Singing was a way for them to let out their pain and their woes, and it was also a way for them to cope with the harsh racist society that they were living in. And a lot of the songs they sang later on became actual recordings in the studio. It was a common practice for record manufacturers to go down south and listen to the songs that black field workers were singing. Then they would take those melodies and actually re-record them. Also, a lot of the earlier country western songs were originally sung by black cowboys, but they never got credit for it. John Lomax had grown up in Texas. In 1933, he and his son Alan received a grant from the Library of Congress to motor through the South, visiting big penitentiaries to make recordings. People have written that my grandfather, for example, was obsessed with the prisons and that he wanted to capture something isolated, but he wanted to find the oldest material, which is a very important thing to do. It's like archeology. span It was very scientific. So when you look at country music, oftentimes you won't see black people credited for being the inspiration and the pioneers of country music. 
And that is really largely due to the fact that black people have been written out of country music history. One of the country music pioneers that you never hear about is D. Ford Bailey. D. Ford Bailey was a harmonica player who had a very unique sound. the harmonica in a way that was imitating the sound of a moving vehicle or a moving train. His fresh new sound was all the rave in the 1920s and people would love to listen to him during their barn dances. In the 1920s, D. Ford made his claim to fame by performing weekly on this country radio show called the Grand Opera or what they call the Barn Dance Show. D. Ford played so well that he actually inspired the radio host to change the name of the show to the Grand Old Opry. To this day, the Grand Old Opry is a historical country music site where country artists perform on stage weekly. D. Ford's harmonic sounds was very influential on country music, but sadly he would not receive the recognition that he deserved. There were multiple reasons for this, but the biggest reason is radio stations and venues were going through a huge financial dispute with ASCAP. ASCAP was requiring venues to pay fees for the use of copyrighted music. To avoid paying fees, the Grand Old Opry required their artists to perform new music under another corporation called BMI. D. Ford Bailey was pressured by the Grand Old Opry Company to perform new music under BMI, but he didn't. He was told by his management to stick to his old songs. And the sad thing was he wasn't paid properly for the songs he was playing. Eventually, D. Ford Bailey was fired by the Grand Old Opry, and after he was fired, he kind of vanished into obscurity. His legacy went unrecognized in music history, but his harmonic sound was very influential on country music as a whole. What a wonderful man this man has made, a legend but almost disappeared, <laughs> and in a way, he did disappear. D. Ford's legacy includes only a few recordings, most captured in the last few years of his life by friend David Morton. Racism makes ignorant people out of all of us if we don't know history, and I think that uh, D. Ford Bailey's memory is a victim of that. I think D. Ford Bailey haunts the country industry right now at the level of trying to make the industry view itself holistically rather than partially. If he remains a footnote in history, then a similar crime would be to put Benny Goodman, a white jazz player, as a footnote in jazz history. You can't do that. He's more than a footnote. The reason why I brought up D. Ford Bailey's story is because I wanted to bring up an example of how black pioneers in country music have been largely overlooked. Most people don't know the story of D. Ford Bailey and how he has influenced the sound of country music. And you have to ask yourselves, why? Why is that? The reason why is because people of color have been pushed out of the country music spaces. Even the late great Ray Charles had a whole country western music album, but country radio stations refused to play it because the gatekeepers of country music did not want outsiders or too many people of color infiltrating the country music spaces. So fast forward to today. Here you have a rapper named Lil Nas X, who is a black kid who is really on the verge of breaking another barrier in country music. Now he might not be what people consider a traditional country artist, but his song Old Town Road is acceptable enough to be considered a country song in today's music. So I don't believe that his song should have been taken off the Billboard country charts. That's all I'm saying. Anyway, tell me what you all think about this video down below. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and share this video if you care. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye!